all they care about is like all they care. This is not like some small white eye. It looks like a cone a lot of ways. It looks like the dark side of it. I gotta see a lot of it. Alright, honestly, I couldn't decide whether or not I should make this video because it's low-key embarrassing as fuck to talk about. It's a, it's a true story of how I got wrapped up into a network marketing group, otherwise known as a pyramid scheme, and this is what I learned from it. So before I get into the story, let me just kind of set the stage. Like what exactly is network marketing, um, multi-level marketing or pyramid schemes? Basically network marketing and multi-level marketing are the same thing that it's essentially a business strategy where someone at the company who was also recruited previously by someone else, then recruits someone like you to join. And the cycle continues as more and more people join and growing the company in theory. You earn money by selling the company's products, and you also earn a percentage of sales from all the people that you brought to the company. Therefore, the more people that you bring, the more money you make. You see the picture? All right, so how did this all begin? About a year ago, literally a month into moving Austin, one of my college friend's older brothers DM'd me on LinkedIn out of the blue. Let's call him Jay. I've never really spoken to Jay, but nonetheless, we started exchanging messages and eventually the conversation shifted towards our goals, like our long-term plans and blah, blah, blah. He proceeded to then tell me how he's been building this side hustle with the help from a couple in the Midwest that he met and they're helping him build this wildly successful e-commerce business. He said, Gen, you know what? You, you, you seem like an ambitious and humble guy. Let me see if what I can do and introduce you to them. And yeah, you know, at the beginning, it definitely felt sketch, but I was pumped. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So when Jay sold me that dream in a vehicle to get there, I was, I was hooked. Fast forward a couple more messages and Zoom calls, and he then finally introduces me to this so-called mentor. Let's call him M. We then had like five to seven Zoom meetings called the vetting process, where I essentially had to prove myself to earn mentorship. And if it even made sense for both of us to give me this opportunity to launch my own business as part of their group. I mean, look, it's easy now to say how obviously sus this all sounds and I cringe at how naive I was. But in all honesty, what really drew me in was about the impact that both Jay and M would talk about how much this business has impacted their growth and how it can empower others. And also I was just really drawn by the idea of mentorship, of getting to learn from someone who's already created success. I was definitely, I mean, it's, it's obvious. I was absolutely naive, but they really sold me this dream and I was sold. So as you can see in these messages, just like how Jay recruited me for a few months, I did that whole reaching out to my network to build my business. And this meant recruiting people to be under you, whether that's through people you know or complete strangers you find. And at one point, I, I remember I even had a goddamn Excel spreadsheet of potential people that I can reach out to. That's how bad it got. So what are examples of some network marketing companies? I'm sure you've heard of them and know someone that's in it, whether it's Mary Kay, Avon, Arbonne. The company I was associated with happened to be the biggest one of them all. It was called Amway. If you feel like you've heard it, you definitely have. They're so big that the founders, the DeVos family, own the goddamn Orlando magic. I mean, you name it, whether it be fitness products or CBD cream, there's hundreds of network marketing companies and they all sell all sorts of shit. But really what's not, it's, the products aren't important. What's common about these network marketing companies is that it's all based on getting people under you, recruiting people so that you can make a bigger pyramid and really create more money to stay active as an Amway distributor or IBO. They called it. It meant having to purchase a certain amount of products for ourselves every month. But not only that, I had to subscribe to an educational podcast where they taught us mindset and how to build our business. On top of that, we also had to buy expensive ass tickets to live conferences once a quarter in these conference halls. And as you can imagine, it was culty as hell, but honestly, that took me so long to realize. It wasn't until I told my ex at the time that I was involved in this whole thing. And that's when it finally hit me that, look, this whole thing is based on manipulation, abusing the trust that you have in your network. So I quit. Thankfully, I was only in it for a few months and never recruited anyone. But the reality is, is that there are people who 
I actually spent years in this shit and successfully recruit a lot of people under them. And I'm sure that we can all agree that someone like that will really know what's going on in these network marketing companies. Recently, I did exactly that. I was just like, oh my God, like, if I felt like, like the world was collapsing because I trusted these people so many years. I interviewed a gentleman by the name of Hugh Zhang, who in 2018 left his wildly successful network marketing business that at its peak was running around million dollar in revenue. He had hundreds of people under him from all different states and countries. So I interviewed him to hear about his experiences in network marketing after 12 years and the dark underbelly that ultimately made him leave. Reached a certain level that's quite significant in network marketing, probably like uh, the top 0.1% or so. So out of the, all the people in network marketing, I was one of the few people that actually make money because the myth about most people lose money is quite true in my experience. Did you look for a certain type of person? Right. Like it's kind of like they offer you like all the things an ambitious young, young person wants. And then later on, I started also seeing that they also teach us to target international students. The problem was that was not the whole story. And when I get to see, obviously, the other side after 12 years, I saw the other side of things that's not shown. And that's eventually left to me, you know, leaving the business. Yeah. Yeah. So let's actually dive into that. What was like your main catalyst for leaving? In this organization that I was a part of, they were actually targeting international students for over a decade to recruit them to join their marketing businesses, basically making legal claims that was entirely false. Like they would tell the national students like, oh yeah, you can build now marketing business here in the U.S. even as an international student, it's legal, don't worry about it, it's not a job, you can do this. And a lot of national students, they're like 19, 18 years old, they just came to the state, they didn't know about the laws enough, and they would join. And eventually in 2018, before I left, one of the person that I knew got deported, actually had to leave the U.S. because, you know, he was investigated. And it turns out that, you know, his involvement in our marketing business was strictly against his immigration status. So he basically got kicked out. And that's when I really first time found out that building our marketing as an international student is illegal. I was just like, oh my God, like, I felt like, like the world was collapsing because I trusted these people so many years. And I didn't realize they were capable to lie about something like this. This is not like some small white lie, you know, that you tell, right? This is like a serious issue. I was like, you know what? I'm done with this organization and I mean, I'm out basically. So I told them that I'm leaving right away. They try to handle me. Basically what they're saying like, oh, you know, just go away quietly so that we can continue to grow a business. You can keep making money, you know? They're trying to like, again, to like downplay this and try to like not cause any issues. And then I didn't do anything for about maybe like eight months to a year. I kind of trying to see like, maybe I still have some like hope that maybe these people will try to do the right thing, maybe. And then what I saw the following couple of months was they didn't do anything about this. Like they literally didn't say anything. And they continued to recruit international students just like normal. That's when I realized that, you know what, if I don't do something about this, there'll be thousands and thousands of more students getting scammed and putting themselves at risk without knowing it. That's why I put out a podcast in May, basically, you know, broadcast to all the people that follows me, let them know that, look, if you recruit national students, you are effectively putting them at risk of deportation. They are just like any other, you know, scammy business people. All they care about is making money. But do you think yeah. that network marketing is a cult? How in the collective fuck did you fall for this? Right, if you look at a lot of people in the like religious cults, it's kind of like that. 